Although the Europeans commented on the good road network they found in Buganda Kingdom, they did not indicate that they disrupted a man-made water project that Kabaka Mwanga had initiated. Mwanga had designed a canal to connect Mango Hill and Lake Victoria to Munyunyu to his movement of persons, starting with himself. In a short 11 months, with neither cranes nor graders, Mwanga's project managed to create what we see today as Kabaka's Lake in Endeavour, a few kilometers from the city center, by 1886. <laughs> Because of the disruption, all that Uganda now has from Wanga's water project is a two square kilometer lake, which, at a depth of 6 to 1.5 meters, competes strongly with Lake Victoria's 64 meters. But how did the great king manage this civil engineering feat? The Kabaka first identified the first area that had several underground springs, meaning that the water project would neither depend on rivers and tributaries to feed it, nor would it adversely affect the water levels in Lake Victoria. And what is more, the new water body would not depend on rainfall. When the Kabaka was satisfied with the design, he entrusted the project to a civil supervisor, a subject called Musoke. But Musoke was a bit lazy and the project implementation was going slowly. So Mwanga sacked him and replaced him with a more vibrant supervisor, Kamiya Ndikumulanga. Kamiya did not waste any time and called on each Muluka or parish to send in all the able-bodied persons to do their part in digging the lake. However, some chiefs and princes did not want to dig and Kamiya reported them to the king. In response, King Mwanga himself went down the pit and started digging. When they saw this, all royals joined the project, and by the time political instability disrupted the work, digging had reached Najanankumbi and Makindye. What we see today in form of the lake was accomplished by a communal work in 11 months. Some of the small hills we see today are mounds of soil evacuated by creating the lake. All governments that came since Mwanga was disposed 128 years ago have not taken forward his initiative by connecting the country using water. Even the largest water body in Africa, Lake Victoria, on which Mwanga had a 6,000 boat flotilla that constituted the strongest navy in the region then, today remains largely unnavigated.